Uh, my name is Shannon Brody, and we're going to get started right now. Uh, I just want to go over a few housekeeping things before we get into it. Um, number one, all of your uh, phones are on mute right now, and I do that just so it eliminates background noise that might be going on in people's offices that they're unaware of. Um, I am actually here real time, so what that means is you're able to ask questions um, at any point. So there's two things you can do. One, um, type your question into the question in the chat log, which is in the GoToMeeting screen kind of towards the bottom. Um, as questions pop up, um, I may answer them right away if it's related to what I'm talking about or if it's something that's not necessarily related to what I'm talking about, I'm still going to answer it. It just might need to wait until the end. Um, occasionally, I get bombarded with questions at the end, which is great, um, but then we run out of time for me to answer them all. So if you do ask a question that I don't answer, um, I will either email you back myself or one of our support staff will call you or email you to answer your question. Um, occasionally, there are questions that you can't really articulate um, and you just need to talk to me. So if we have time, you can just ask me to unmute your phone. Um, in the chat log and I'll unmute your phone and then you can talk to me most of the time uh, we do we do have time for that um, if people want to actually speak to me um, so what we're going to talk about today is the four key functions um, first I'm going to give like an overview of the dashboard what you're looking at right now and some of the functionality on the dashboard and then we're going to get right into the four key functions this is the beginning of a seven series session, seven weeks, on um, using Touchstone. Each session, we have a particular topic that we cover um, that goes kind of in, in order, so it makes sense, um, starting with the four key functions and then ending here with the dashboard. During these sessions, I'm going to be highlighting library processes, so processes from our process library. And I'm going to be talking about um, how to use those processes, so what they are and how you can download them and implement them and start to use them right away. Um, for the next seven weeks, if you're so inclined, think of this hour as time for you to not only learn Touchstone, but to work on your business or on your department or on your position, depending on who you are in the company. Consider it to be time where you're learning Touchstone, but then also hopefully inspires you to maybe spend another hour after we've met today or another two hours kind of implementing and doing some of the things that we're talking about. Um, we all need a little hand-holding at times um, to, to get going and start um, really using Touchstone to its full advantage for your company. And I'm going to be giving you lots of tips and techniques on how to do that through these, these seven sessions. Um, work on your business after with these meetings and then come back next week with maybe questions or telling me what you did that week. The best way to combat overwhelm is to take action. Touchstone can feel overwhelming because it is a big documenting all of your processes and procedures and using them is a big ordeal. Um, it's a big endeavor. That's a better way to say it. It takes time, it takes effort, but as we all know, everything in life that's worth anything takes time and effort. If you're feeling overwhelmed, trust me, the best thing to do is to, to start to take action, and it can be little steps towards your overall goal. At the end of these seven weeks, if you do take little steps, you're gonna be in a completely different place than you are right now. So what you're looking at right now is called the dashboard. And this is what everyone sees when they first log into Touchstone. If you're the owner of your company or a manager in a department, when you would give access to Touchstone to your employees, then this is what they're going to see when they first log in. So speaking to this point of overwhelm, Employees in a business don't need to know everything about Touchstone. They don't need to know about the four functions or really about the org chart. All they need to know is the dashboard. So the control panel here should have their position title right here. And when they go to that control panel, they're going to see the processes that they're accountable for. And whether the processes are fully documented or not, it doesn't matter. This is where they're going to see the actual processes or things that they're accountable for doing. Ultimately, when you have done all the documentation, they can then go and click that process or select it from the dashboard, and they can 
look at work plans to remind themselves of how to do the work if they need to, or if a manager has said, you, you haven't been doing this right, can you go review it in touchstone? If there's something in a process that needs to be completed, like a checklist right here, then they can go and complete that checklist and save it back to touchstone. So the purpose of the dashboard is primarily to give access for employees to have access to their processes. And they have access to their processes, number one, so that they can follow them, be trained on them, learn them, number two, so they can use them if that's required. So we're going to talk a lot more about the dashboard, but I just want everyone to hear that, that touchstone for everyday employees can be as simple as log on to the dashboard, go to your control panel. That's all it needs to be. The dashboard also has this management area that is for managers. So managers can go in and review and keep training information on their employees. I'm seeing these two people because I'm their manager. I'm above them on the org chart. The dashboard also has access to the public processes, which is this section right here. So the public processes are processes that have been made public. They're, um, by definition, should be company-wide information. So they should be processes that everyone in the business has access to or needs to have access to. They're typically HR things, uh, employee handbook, how to request a vacation, safety, your software how-tos, like how to use the CRM or any other software tools that you use, emergencies, classes and workshops, so things that are um, meant to be company-wide information. Again, we'll talk a lot more about the public processes as we go through, but that's the basic definition. It's processes that have been marked as public and are available to everyone who has access to Touchstone. Also on the dashboard, if you look up here to the right, you have a link to our resource center, which is right here. When you click this button, it takes you to the Touchstone resource center or help desk. So this is where there are any number of things related to how to use Touchstone. We like to really pride ourselves on the fact that Touchstone is a simple to use tool and everything you need to know how to use it is here in the Resource Center. The user guide section is a step-by-step -step for everything in Touchstone. So there's a getting started area. Um, it goes by section or key functions, which is what we're talking about today, organization chart, job descriptions, all the process tools, so documenting processes and using all the process tools, the control panel or dashboard, the management review and the control panel, it's all there. Public processes, here's management review, how to run reports, account administration. So it goes through every section of Touchstone and gives you a step-by-step -step for how to use that section. So here in the four functions, if I click just this at the top, it's going to do an overview of the four functions. So what is the four key functions, how to edit them, tips for the four functions. And there's even a little, I think this is like a 10 minute video on how to use the four functions. If I click here on what is the four functions, it's going to give a definition, lot detailed information about what it is. So I'm pointing this particular point out so that for any of you who are furiously trying to take notes um, on definitions, don't worry about that. It's all here in the user guides area. So if we talk about getting, doing, guiding, running and the four functions, you can just hear what I'm saying. If you want to go back and read the definition again, you just go here to the user guides. It's all there. There's a webinars area here, which has strategy webinars and technical webinars. So step-by-step -step trainings. The videos section has a lot of great getting started videos, um, something around all of the processes in the process library, explaining what they are. Up here under Support Plus, if you ever want to contact us, this is a quick way to do it, contact support. Click here if you want to report a problem, so some issue that you're seeing in Touchstone. Also click here if you want to report a feature request. So something you would like Touchstone to do that it isn't doing right now, some idea you have, send it to us. We take those things seriously, and if enough people are asking for it and it makes sense, then we're going to do it. Contact support right here. So if you have a question or you just want someone to call you, this is a quick way to get a hold of us. Also here under Support Plus, um, you're all here in the live session, so there's no reason to re-register for that. But this... Um, training series is also great. It's called Touchstone University. 
This, these are shorter sessions. They're 30 minutes long. They're once a week. I'm just going to click here so you can see the topics. So right here, these are the new topics for um, the first quarter of this year. These are 30-minute sessions where we just zero in on specific um, things you can use Touchstone for. So last week was training. Yesterday was communication, performance reviews, recruiting and hiring, key performance indicators. So if you're interested in these, you just register right here, and it's the same idea as now. You just get sent a, an email link, and then you log on. Um, there's also a glossary of terms here, which can be useful. So remember the Resource Center. Anywhere you are in Touchstone, it's always right here in the upper right-hand corner, the link to it. And it always opens in a second window, so you can see it's still open up here. This little icon is your logout button. So it's a good habit once you've, you've been using Touchstone for the day to um, log out when you're finished with it. Touchstone will say act, stay active um, for, I think it's four hours with no activity. So it's going to stay open like software would be on your laptop or your computer with no activity. The minute you do something, then the four hours starts over again. Having said that, it's still good protocol to log out at the end of the day or when you're finished using it. This little icon here can take you to account administration and to user settings. So if you're not an administrator, you will not see this little wheel icon. That just means you haven't been set up as an administrator. With this wheel icon, you can access the account admin area, and this is where you go to set up users and, you, and create access, things like that. And there's going to be a whole session on the use of account administration. Okay. So let's bypass the um, the uh, dashboard for now and go over here to the four functions. So this is called the left navigation. And here in the left navigation, you can access the four key functions. You can access your organization chart. You can run reports of things that you've done in your control panel and management review if you're a manager. And this is also where the search is. The search allows you to search for everything that you've put into Touchstone. So if I just hit the drop down here, you can search processes, you can search for work plans, checklists, so all the process tools, you can search for job descriptions, or you can search all. And it will, you can put a partial or full word in, and it will give you everything, return everything that has that word or partial word in it. So if you forget, where something is or if you put something in this is the quickest way to find it so go right here to search all when i click the four key functions so we're going to talk about this next when i click the four key functions i see the four key functions listed so the four key functions um, is a place in a nutshell where all your processes are listed so this is where the master list of everything you've put into Touchstone exists. When you click one of the four key functions, so I just clicked guiding, it takes me to the four key functions area. So I see it right here at the top, four key functions. I can still see the four, guiding, getting, running, doing, down the side here. And I know I'm in guiding because this is bolded. But I can also see them in this folder setup. So guiding getting, running, doing. I also know I'm in guiding because this folder is kind of illuminated here. If I was to click to guiding, or getting, sorry, which is the next one over here, I see this folder illuminated. Plus, it's bolded over here. So you can see the um, hierarchy of the four key functions listed here in a side view and then across in a folder view. I'm going to go back to getting here. The four key functions represent your business as a whole. It is the four key areas of any business. So if you were to get in a hot air balloon and rise metaphorically above your business and look down at the landscape of it, what we're saying is you'd see it in four quadrants. You'd see it in four areas. Guiding is strategy and management. So it's the processes you use to guide the business. Strategic things, business strategy, developing the business, analyzing the business overall, and then employee management, so how you guide your employees to get results. Getting the business, which is the second of the four key functions, 
is for getting new business in the door. So it's sales, marketing strategy, advertising, everything you use to generate new business and convert that business into, into clients or customers. Running the business is the office processes. It's finance, administration, human resources, IT. It's the overall office processes that, whose main purpose is to support the rest of the company. But they're common, running the business is commonly known as the office processes. What happens in the administrative part of the office. Doing is the delivering of your products or services. So it's your operations, your service delivery, your production. So this is, the work that happens after you make the sale. So with these four key functions, if you look at them as a whole, you see everything that happens from a systematic way, a process-driven way in your business. In the four key functions, the next thing that you want to achieve or create are the categories within each of the four key functions, or we call them sub-functions. So I'm going to go back here to guiding. So if you think of the four key functions as an outline, now we're in guiding and we want to think of the categories or the sub areas within this function called guiding the business. I'm going to go up here to the right and collapse the processes that I have in my sub functions so you can just see the sub functions. So inside of guiding the business here, we have strategic processes. That's a sub function or a category. We have employee management, which is another sub function or category. And then we have um, board, board of directors and meetings, and then training. So these are pretty common sub-functions that I would typically see inside of guiding the business. Um, but you can have completely different ones. The main purpose of the sub-functions is to help you to think about what processes you need and to organize them into categories. If we just had a big list of everything related to guiding, well, it's going to be too it's difficult to manage that way. So you put it into categories or into these sub-functions. Inside the sub-functions is where the processes are listed. So you see all these processes I have here in this sub-function. Sub I can collapse um, or expand these sub-functions and see the processes. So all I'm doing is clicking on the sub-function title there. In getting the business, so I'm going to go to getting next, and then I'm going to collapse these sub-functions again. These are my getting the business sub-functions. I've got one for sales. I have one for marketing strategy, advertising, sales management, and estimating. If you're a business or you're in an industry that does estimating, this might be a sub-function that you have inside of getting the business. Some people like this in operations if you're a construction or a production company, but some view it in, in um, consider it more of a sales process. Now, I'm saying this on purpose because the point I want to make is it doesn't matter really if you want estimating processes and doing or if you consider um, training to be a running the business function um, or in doing the business, if you think customer service is more of a sales thing, it's really up to you where you put your processes and sub-functions. I think there's something to be said for sticking to the main themes of the four key functions, so getting business in the door, guiding, running, and doing. But having said that, there's no right or wrong here. You know, this is your system, and you can put processes wherever you want them to go. So these would generally be typical sub-functions that I would see inside of getting the business for every industry. Now running, I'm just going to go here for a second, and then I'm going to collapse these again. These are, again, some typical sub-functions I'd see in running the business. Finance, administration, human resources, every business that needs, um, has human resource, has employees, needs human resource processes, financial management, this is the higher level finance things, and then IT, all your computer processes. Um, so this is a good question. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to stop and answer it. Someone's asking why human resources is here and why management is here. So again, this is just the way that we define it. We consider human resource processes to be policy driven. Um, they're administrative. They're implementing policy. 
So how to fire someone, how to do onboarding, how to the employee handbook, how to give policies and raise bonuses and raises. So this is an HR department type thing, processes. Whereas management, I'm just going to go here back to guiding the business. Management is related to employees ongoing management of their work, the ongoing management of them. It goes past the recruiting and hiring and past the policy to what do manage, managers do to manage employees. So we consider that to be a guiding the business thing. So having said that, again, if you'd rather see your human resource processes over here and running over here in guiding or management over here and running, that's completely up to you. Um, so I'm going to go to doing the business next. And again, I'll just collapse these. Here's where um, I'm just going to answer this question really quickly again, because I think it's relative as well. What I showed you in guiding, getting and running those sample sub functions, all of that is in, yes, it is in the help desk. So all you need to do is go to the user guides, go to the four key functions, go to sub functions, and you'll see a complete description of um, ideas that we have on um, typical sub functions. Here in doing the business is where the sub functions become industry specific because this is your operations. This is the delivering of your products or services. So this is where you need to think about what are categories of work within your industry specific operations. So this would be kind of a mixture of a service delivery and a production company. So client service, and this is all the service processes if you deliver a service. Um, production management, or this could say service management or operations management. These are the um, operational or production management processes, not, a, not overall employee management of every employee in the company. These are processes related specifically to operations management. Um, this could be just service or service delivery. This could say customer service. If you deal with materials, um, vehicles, you have a warehouse, you might consider a subfunctions like this one, material delivery or warehouse. If you're a retail organization, that's going to be completely different because you've got um, different product areas and different um, categories within your function or within your doing the business. If you want help with this, we're here to help you 24-7. We've seen every, every industry known to man in Touchstone, so, and which, me, which means we, we are well-versed in typical categories of work within every industry. So send us a message in the help desk and someone will get back to you or they might even like email you some suggestions. Okay, so let's go over this toolbar functionality right here now that you've got a general overview of the four functions. This toolbar item right here will allow you to edit the function title. It's as simple as that. So the function title is getting, doing, guiding, running. So if I didn't like doing right here, and I wanted to call this something different, oops, I just click edit function title and I type in um, whatever I wanted to call it. Let's say I wanted to call it production. And then I just hit save, and now the function title will have changed. You see it's different here, and it's also different over here. So edit the function titles if you don't like our terminology. Um, some people really glob onto it and like it a lot. Others find it extremely confusing. It just depends on what, you know, kind of person you are and what style you like. If it's confusing to you at all, then change it because you don't, you want this to be easy. Don't make it confusing. So change it to whatever you want it to be. One thing I would suggest is that you stick to the normal themes or to the themes that we've created. So don't call this sales and then call this advertising because you're going to run out of functions. There's only four. Um, over to the right of edit function title, this is how you control the sub functions. So right here, I can create a new sub function. I can edit one that exists or I can delete ones that I have. So to create one, super easy, just hit create, type in the name of the sub function right here and then hit save. The subfunctions will get added to the bottom. So if we scroll all the way down here, you'll see it down here. So same idea if you want to edit, go subfunctions, edit. You just choose the one that you want to edit. You type in the new name and hit save. Super easy. If you want to delete, hit subfunctions, go to delete. Choose the subfunction you want to delete. This is just a reminder that this has processes linked to it. So if you delete it, um, oops, I'm frozen. 
So Touchstone's not going to let you delete it until you've removed those processes. So the only subfunctions you can delete are the ones that are empty. And this is just reminding you of that. Subfunctions can be reordered. So I can just take this and drag this up. Oops, I grabbed the process, not the subfunction. So everything in Touchstone is pretty much drag and drop reorder. So I can also move processes up and down. I can move them from one subfunction to another just by dragging and dropping. If you're going to reorder your subfunctions, I'd suggest you collapse them and then you move them around this way. It's just a little easier because you're not pulling whole lists of processes up. So this is the reorder. Super easy. If you have a lot of processes in one of your functions and a lot of subfunctions, this is an easier way to see it. You can always scroll up and down, but if you look at it in this view, you can see it's just easier to see what you have going on. And then if you want to see one particular list of processes, you just click here and it opens it up. Um, I can also, speaking of moving, I can move processes from one key function to another. So if I have this process, weekly customer meeting process, and I don't want this in production or what was doing the business, say I wanted it running for whatever reason, I just take it and drag it over, put it on top of running the business and let go. Now Touchstone's asking me which subfunction inside of running the business does it belong in? So these are my subfunctions inside of the function I'm going to move this into. I just choose one and then hit move. So then the process is gone from there and it's moved into running. So you can move everything around in this four key functions, up, down, over, inside of one function to another just by doing this. So let's talk about processes. Once you've got your subfunction set, you want to start to add processes to the subfunctions. The processes are these titles that you're seeing right here. Subfunction here, production, and then these are the processes I've listed so far. To add a process, you go right here where it says processes. So these titles up here tell you directly what it's for. Subfunctions, processes. So if you're thinking to yourself, what do I do with this process, or how do I delete it, or how do I add it? Well, it's right here under processes. Everything related to subfunctions is under here. So hit the processes drop down, and there's just two options. Either you can create a process, or you can delete a process. So if I hit create, this um, create box is going to pop up. I put in the name of the process that I want to add. And then I tell Touchstone which subfunction it should go in. So I choose the subfunction that I want to put it in, and then I just hit save. And then the process is added right here. So someone's asking about the color coding, so I'll just speak to that um, right now. When a process is red, like this one I just added, it means that it's just a title, so there's nothing in it yet. What I mean by that is if I select this and then I look over here, there's no documentation that's been created. So this is the process where you create the documentation of a process. This is called the process tools page. This is where the step-by-step, -step, the instructions, the information on how to do this work will exist. If a process is blue, like this one, that just means that it's got some content in it. So it's got some information in it. It's got something's been created in it. The documentation has been started is another way to say it. So everything you're seeing in blue here has got some information in it. If I click one of these blue processes and then I look over to the left here, this is what I mean by it's got something in it. Here's a work plan that's got a starting of a of a step-by-step. -step. So the minute it has a tool in it, like a work plan, or here's a form, or a document, and somebody's begin, begun to document it, then it's going to turn blue. When you're finished with the documentation, so you're done with the work plans, the checklist, it's fully documented, it's ready to go, you can turn it black just by clicking the process on this screen and filling in this box right here, process documentation completed. So we'll talk more about the color coding as we go on, but that's it in a nutshell. This one's empty. It hasn't been started yet. This one's got something in it, and this one's done. To delete a process, right here under processes, I choose delete. Now I'm seeing these in alphabetical order. 
So this is all, these are all the processes in this subfunction. So I would go to the process that I want to delete. I choose it and then I hit delete. Choose, delete, now that process is gone. So that's how you add processes. <clears throat> Another way to get ideas for processes is to go into our library right here. So when you click library, you're going to see what's called the general processes. If you are a member of one of our resellers, so if you have an organization that you purchased your Touchstone account through, you may see more, process, more libraries here. And that would be just because um, whoever you've purchased Touchstone through has an industry-specific library that they've given you access to. But everybody will have this general process library. When I click this, it's going to show me a list of example processes that I can download. Every function has its own library. So guiding, getting, running, and doing all have their own library. And they have processes within them that are related to that function. So we're in running the business now. And if I go library here, I go general processes, I'm going to see a list of processes that are related to running the business. So you're going to see finance, administration, human resource, admin, um, IT processes here. If you want to download a library process, you just select the process, put a little check next to it. I think it's good to go up here and hit this drop down and choose the subfunction you want to put it in. If you don't do that, it's fine. You can just drag and drop to reorder them all. But if you do this to begin with, then it you know makes less work for you. And then you just hit copy. Then Touchstone will copy the library processes. And if you go and look at that subfunction that you added it, it'll be right at the bottom of the list in that subfunction. I'm just going to drag this to the top so everyone can see it. So this is a process that I just downloaded from the library. When you click on it, you can look at the tools that are over here to the left. So the, this is a library process on employee satisfaction surveys and suggestions. And there are forms in here um, of different ideas for surveys that you might give to your employees. So if I click on this custom form, there's two versions of it. This is in a document, but this is in the custom form. This is just an employee satisfaction survey. So with these library processes, the idea is that you download some best practices, some um, something that has been documented for you, and then you can edit it and make it your own. It just gives you a head start. So definitely do this. Go and look at the library processes and um, download what you think would be useful for you. Remember that each function has its own library. So here's guiding the business. If I go to the library here and go to general processes, now I'm seeing a whole another list of library processes. So these are related to guiding the business. So you're going to see strategic, managerial, human um, board of directors processes. And it's the same idea. You fill in the check mark. If you see anything that's already grayed out, right, like this one, that's because you've already downloaded it. So it's already in your system. So then I just hit copy. And then that process gets, gets downloaded or copied into my account. And it's right there. If you delete a library process, so if I was to go here, processes, delete, and I was to delete this process, it's just going to put it back into the library right here. So just remember that if you delete a library process, it's going to go back into the library. and You can always download it later. And I like to make this point because sometimes people get really excited about the library processes because they are pretty cool. You download everything, and then you're just, you know, there's probably... I would say maybe 100 processes in every library. Not in every one, but in total, there's probably 100 processes. If you downloaded all of those, you're going to feel overwhelmed because there's going to be a lot of processes in your account. And you're not going to have entered those yourself. So you're not going to know what's in them. And it's going to require you to go inside of every one and review it and decide if it's something that you want or not. So be um, scrutinize the list of library processes. Really look at them and say, do I need bank funding? You may like that, think that that's an interesting topic, but if this isn't something that you need, that you're going to implement, first of all, if it's not something you're going to edit, 
implement, use in six months, don't download it right now. Then go to the next one, board of directors administration. Well, I might think to myself, it's a great idea. We should be having board meetings, but we're so busy this year, we're not going to get to that. I would not download that. So go through one at a time and look at them. These aren't going to disappear. They're always going to be here. Um, if you download a process because you like it, like this one that we just downloaded, and then you look at it, and what, I, what it means by look at it is look at every one of the tools. Here's a warning checklist. So this is how to warn someone of something they're doing wrong, verbal warning checklist. Look at every single thing. If you look at this checklist and you're like, we just don't do it this way, then just delete that checklist and go to the next one. So comb through it all. Look at each form. If you like this form, keep it. You don't have to edit or change anything now. Just know that you like it and you want to do that when you get to it. If there's something in it again that you don't want, then delete it. So comb through the library processes as you go. Remember, if you delete them, you can always get them back again by just going back to the library and downloading them again. Um, okay, so let's talk about some techniques for building your four key functions. So we talked about the functionality, and now I just want to talk about things to be thinking about, best practices and techniques for how to, um, how to develop your four key functions. First of all, it's a good mindset to have to, to er eliminate people and personalities from your brain as you do this. So think purely about process. Imagine your business anew. Erase all the people and personalities in your mind and think of it as a blank landscape. Get in that balloon and rise above the landscape of your business and look down at it from above and imagine that you're structuring it by process. Not who does what, not who's good at what, but by processes that need to be um, achieved, need to be implemented, how one process flows into the next, what processes you know you need to be doing but you haven't done yet, things that have gone, processes and work that have gone on in your business for years but there hasn't been any documentation about how it's, how it's supposed to be done. So think of it from this entrepreneurial or if you're a manager from a managerial point of view and sketch out your business as if you've never operated it before. Think about first each function one at a time. So guiding the business, think strategy, think employee management, what processes do you need for that? Um, if it helps you, think about workflow. So here in getting the business and also doing the business, workflow identification can help can, can be pretty good. So what I mean is, let's go here, I'm just going to collapse this. So think advertising first, and then think sales. So what processes do you need to generate leads? So first of all, think of that just blankly. What processes do you need to generate leads? What are the methods or ways that you generate leads? Social media, word of mouth and referral. Um, direct mail, cold calling, um, pay-per-click, whatever ways that you do that, um, webinars, uh, industry contacts, list out those processes. Then think a lead comes in, so this is what I mean by workflow identification, a lead comes in, what's the first thing that happens? So now we're talking about lead qualification for things that happen here, and then the lead comes in, what is the first thing that occurs? So you might think to yourself, when a lead comes in, we, that we need to qualify it. So that would be a process, lead qualification. So you go process, create, type in that process. Then you think once a lead is qualified, what's the next thing that happens? Well, they get um, scheduled for sales. So you would identify that process, scheduling appointments for sales. The appointment gets scheduled, then what's the next thing that happens? Needs-based selling. So we get on the phone with them and we sell them something. Or if you have transactional sales, maybe you don't have either one of these processes and it's just at the counter how you help those people. So once the needs-based selling, once the sales process is over, either they convert and then we're on to doing the business or they don't and they go into sales follow-up. So think it through like this and then the next piece Either they're in sales follow-up or they've converted, and now we're on to production. 
So once a new lead has been converted into a customer, what's the first thing that happens? Do they have, um, are they then passed off to production? And what is that process? So then you, some industries can think through their production processes this way as well. So a new client comes on board, um, what's the first thing that we do? Well, we set them up in our system, then we set them up for billing, then we do um, a production um, schedule for them, then we so think about it one by one. The library processes are really going to help you in guiding and getting and running, particularly in guiding and running. So what I mean by that is in guiding the business, there are some basic managerial processes that every business needs. And people can argue with me about this all day long, and I'll prove them wrong every time. There are a set of managerial processes that every business needs to have. If you have managers, even if you just have subcontractors, you need managerial processes. And it doesn't matter what industry you're in, basic ones um, apply to everyone. So those are things like performance review, um, progressive, ri progressive written warning, or how to discipline somebody, um, time management. People ignore this, but it is a really important process. Manager meetings, what to do if people are late. This one, you know, could come or go. One-on-one um, -on -one meetings, uh, problem resolution, um, new employee 60-day review, one-on-one um, -on -one meetings, uh, we already went through that one. Um, so as we go through these sessions, I'm going to be talking a lot more about the key managerial processes. But the libraries can really help you here. In fact, if you're new to Touchstone, you haven't done anything in your four functions, you could go to guiding the business, download library processes, go to getting, download from there, go to running, download from there, and you're probably, you know, 85% done with your four key functions. You might need to add a few here and there for different things that you do in getting, um, but running is pretty consistent as well. There are basic financial procedures that every business needs. Accounts payable, accounts receivable, um, making deposits, collections, um, financial statement preparation, paying your taxes. These are all things that every business needs to do. Administration, you know, how to answer the phone, how to file, how to deal with office maintenance, office organization. Some of you with virtual offices, these might be a little different, but the basic concept is still there. Whether I'm um, filing things in a paper file system or I'm doing it on a network, it still needs to be done. At the the uh, description or the explanation of how that's done. Um, human resources. These are some basic processes that you know, a lot of businesses, small businesses don't have because they don't have time for it and they don't know how wrong it is that they don't have them and it's until they're in court being sued. But these are really some just common HR processes that you can download and use. Um, IT processes. So go to the libraries and download from these three functions. Then this, in doing the business, this is where it gets, you know, a little more complicated because it's industry specific. So think about the workflow thought process with this. Um, sit down with your production team and say, talk about the work that occurs. What do they do? What do they think is necessary? You can go to the library and download, get ideas from our library. Um, these, the things that you find in this library are not industry specific, but you will see a lot of customer service type things, um, like customer satisfaction, customer complaints, safety things, scheduling. So you'll find a few things in there like that. If you get stuck here in your operations, um, give us a call and let us help you. Uh, because again, we may have examples of, of your industry types of processes that we can um, pass off to you. Once you're, um, so another point about listing processes. Um, think of titles as short, specific titles. So you'll notice with my titles, there are usually two words. Productivity reporting, quality control, estimates and work orders, manual labor processes, installation process. <clears throat> so think of a short, specific title. Sometimes I look at people's accounts and the process titles are sentences. Don't make your process titles sentences. It's just, it's, it's more difficult to, to, when someone's glancing through it, to see what that is because they're trying to read a sentence. Plus, it's not general naming protocol. So in general naming protocol is um, first letter of every word is capitalized. 
and the title is typically not describing something, it's naming it. So don't use a lot of adjectives or verbs in your titles. Think of the subject. If you do have um, processes where you have written them as a sentence, so I'll just I'll use this one as an example. On the process tools page, this is the title right here, and then this is what we call the objective. So this is a sentence or a phrase which describes what the process is or what's in the process. So what I see from people is this. So you'll look at your four key functions um, and, oops, I don't know where it went. Somebody has listed it like, um, like a sentence. So if you do see that in any of your processes, just select the process, cut out the sentence, which is in the title field, just right click, cut it out, put in a good title, installation process, and then paste that sentence into here. So this is where it belongs. This sentence then shows up on the job description, which is kind of nice as well. So if you're seeing that in any of your process titles, then fix it. This usually comes from the fact that more than one person has been naming titles and one person is doing it one way and another person is doing it another way. So think about training and suggesting to everyone that they use, they use um, naming protocol, which again is first letter of every word is capitalized and you're talking about subject words, not verbs or adjectives. It's really easy to fix that if you see it. You just click on it, highlight it, put in the title and paste it into um, the objective. There's another thing that happens when you're naming processes where you're not quite sure if something is a process or it's a subfunction or it's a work plan in a process. So there gets to be a bit of confusion around that. There's not an exact answer for this, but I'll give you my answer. A subfunction is a main category which would have processes related to it or required to do it. So finance right here is a subfunction. It's a big category of work. It's like the finance department. So it's like the sales department. So big uh, categories like that um, aren't processes, they're subfunctions. Processes um, are listed under the subfunctions. Processes are the work that needs to be um, done in order to achieve this overall result of finance. Inside of a process, you can have numerous work plans. So here's a process called accounts payable. And when I select that, inside of the process, I have numerous work plans. Everything related to how we pay bills. So how to deposit checks, how to do bank deposits, how to create invoices, how to do check payments. So this is an example of a process I think is, that is organized pretty well. You can see the hierarchy right here in this trail. Running the business is the function, finance is the sub-function, accounts receivable is the process, and the sub-areas of the process or the different workflows within the process are here listed as work plans. Each work plan has a step-by-step -step set of tasks on how to achieve the result of this work plan. So this is a step-by-step -step for how to do check deposits. Now, if we had a work plan called accounts payable instead of all of these, and we attempted to list out everything that happens to pay bills, you can see where that would be way too much inside of one work plan. So think about the workflow. Think about whether that work has a beginning and an end that's clear and concise and achieves the results of depositing checks. If it does, it's a work plan. If it doesn't have a clear beginning and end, and one person sits down and does all of this in one fell swoop, and it is 50 tasks long, well, then that is what it is, and, that, and it should be one work plan. But generally, it's not. Generally, things are broken up into parts. If all of this work is related to accounts payable, it should be inside of the accounts payable process. I like it when processes are, when you have less processes and more work plans. Just because it's easier to manage your workflows that way, it's easier to see things. Accounts receivable, everything related to that is under here. 
Let's go to another example. Here's human resources. Everything related to um, the employee handbook is here. Everything related to um, how to do new employee introduction and orientation is here. Everything related to new employee onboarding is here. So let's click this process. Inside a new employee onboarding, we have these four work plans. How to prepare for the employee to come, what their first day of training is like, what 30 days is like, what 60 days is, is it happens in 60 days. Now I could have four processes. I could have made employee onboarding the, the sub-function, and then I could have had four processes, one for preparing, one for training, but if I did it that way, you could see where I would have probably twice as many sub-functions and um, probably 100% more processes. Because if I took, if I made four process, processes out of one, well now I'm really increasing the amount of processes I have. There's nothing necessarily wrong with that. The only thing that's wrong is it just creates more. And you all can see where this can be a lot just to look at the main processes here. And if we added, you know, if we added doubled the size of this list, that's even more to deal with. So combine like results. The only time when you don't want to do that is if you have two positions that um, are doing that work. So let's say two people are doing accounts payable, two positions on the org chart. And, and what one is doing is confidential to the other. Because when you link a process to a job description, um, you link the whole process. So I can't link work plans within a process here to positions on the org chart. I link the whole accounts payable process. So if what one person does for bank deposits, I don't want the other accounts payable clerk to know what they do then I would not want to build it this way because if I did link the accounts payable process to both of those job descriptions, well then both of them can see what's in this process. If you're having issues with this, what should be combined, what shouldn't, um, then give us a call. You know, there's no uh, reason to get stuck. We're here to help you. All you have to do is go to the support desk, email me directly, ask me, I need help, and someone will just hop on the phone with you, and in about 15 minutes, we'll, we'll help sort it out for you. If you have built um, a process and you decide you wanna combine two processes based on what I just said, you can go to the process that you wanna get rid of and combine with another, and take everything within it and move it out into the other process. So let me say that again in case it was confusing. Based on what I just said, if you have two processes that you want to combine together, then um, go to the process that you want to delete. So keep the process that you want to keep. Go to the process you want to delete. So let's say we want to delete accounts payable and combine it with something else. Go to the tools within it. Go to this toolbar item right here and move all the tools out of this process into the other one that you want to keep. And then delete this once it's empty. So I take this. I hit the drop down. I go to these are all my sub functions. I go to the sub function um, that has the process I'm keeping. I go to that process and I hit save. And this work plan will move out of this one into the other. So you can break processes apart, or you can combine them um, just by moving the tools around them that's inside. This is another kind of high level point, but for those of you who've had touched on for a while, this might make sense. If you have downloaded a library process, like, like let's say this employee handbook process, so you downloaded this. And let's say that you um, have your own employee handbook process. So you downloaded ours and then you, it, you put your own in and you uploaded your own employee handbook. Now you have two employee handbook processes. Let's say you look at this work plan here and you're like, oh, I like this work plan for reviewing and updating the employee handbook. Mine's blank because I deleted these in, a, in another training. But let's say that you like the idea of having this, but you don't want our employee handbook. Or let's say you like the, these sample work rules. Same idea. Go to this tool, take this form out and put it into your process, and then delete this library process. So. 
I've seen this in accounts periodically where people have downloaded good managerial processes and things from our libraries and then they've added their own and suddenly they have duplicates. Empty the library process of the things that you want and then delete it. Um, okay. So let's talk about a few processes from the process library um, that I think are good. Uh, I'm going to go here. So it's the beginning of the year. Where are we? Um, January 16th. So I think it's a good time of year to talk about planning um, and talk about, we call it strategic planning, but it's basically planning for the year. So the key part of making a plan successful is to measure your progress towards it. It's as simple as that. If you think about your business as a whole, imagine that you weren't measuring anything. So you didn't have an accounting system, you weren't measuring your sales, you weren't measuring what things were costing, and you had no way of gauging how the business was, what was happening. That's like, I mean, that's unthinkable to a business owner. So this is the same thing, what I'm about to describe. If you have a plan, you put a plan in place, and you don't measure your progress towards it, you don't measure the results that you're achieving, then there's no point in having the plan. Just like if you aren't measuring sales there's, or any indicators of your business, there's no point in even having a business. It would just be such a huge mess. And you'd look at that mess and you'd say, this isn't working. And so that's what happens to us with strategic planning. We build a plan and then months go by and you look at the plan that you did in January and it's March and you're saying, this is just, this is, none of this is working. This was made no point. And it's because you're not tracking your progress towards it. So I'm going to show you two easy, easy, easy processes that you could do this tomorrow. If you're a manager on the line, a manager of a department, or you're a person, just an employee on a line, I don't mean just, if you're a valuable employee on the line, you can implement these two concepts within your own position and definitely within your own department. A good managers have visions for their department that match the overall company vision. They have a vision for their department and they, um, they track their employees towards it. So they build their department towards it. So we have a process here called strategic planning. And when I click on this, this is a library process. So you can go to the guiding the business function and you can download this from the library. If you downloaded the strategic planning process years ago and never used it, delete it and then re-download it because there might be some new things in it. Um, you can always edit the title of a library process and then touch you fool touchstone into thinking it's not in your account and then it allows you to download it again. So you could do that too. You could just go to this process and temporarily put like a one next to it. And so now if I went back to the library here and guiding, I touched on would let me download this process again because it doesn't think it exists. Over here to the left are some videos and step-by-steps for how to create a strategic plan. What I like about this strategic planning process is that it talks about not just how to create the plan, but how to use the plan, how to track it, to do what I just said, track your progress towards it. So there's a video right here in the first uh, in the first uh, work plan, and you can click this video and watch it, kind of get you in the mood. Um, I think it's by Clay Mask, who's the owner of, of Infusionsoft, and he does this great video on strategic planning. He talks about these five steps, create the vision, um, create your meeting rhythm, which just basically says how often are you going to meet on the strategic plan, create the agendas, and then track and adjust. So really easy. What's your vision? What's your plan for the year? Simple. I'm going to show you how simple it can be. Think about the rhythm. How often are you going to meet? This word, you know, it just means how often are you going to meet to talk about the strategic plan? What are the agendas going to be for that meeting? And then tracking and adjusting. These work plans go through how to do these steps, how to create your vision. What is your purpose? What are you here to do? A lot of you already have answered these questions, I'd assume. Why do you exist? So don't get into the weeds with this. What are you here to do? How are you going to better your customer's experience? What do you believe in? So think about your vision statement. Again, probably a lot of you have already done this. You might already have this vision part. Um, create your strategic plan. 
all that means is what are you going to do this year? Think about it year by year. You can go two years out and say, this is what I want to achieve in two years or three years. But then think about your plan for this year. Keep it simple. What is your plan for this year? How are you going to move yourself more towards your goals? What increase in sales are you going to have? What increase in profitability? Who do you think you need to hire? Um, what key processes do you want to implement? What more do you want to spend on advertising? What do you need to do this year to achieve your goals? Then think about this meeting rhythm. How often are you going to meet? We suggest there's an annual planning meeting. This has two full days. I don't think you necessarily need that. If you don't have anyone to collaborate with, meet with yourself for half a day. If you're a manager, meet with yourself for half a day and come up with this strategic plan. Meet quarterly about it, meet monthly about it, meet weekly about it, and sometimes people even do daily huddles. So you see the timing here. This is um, monthly for half a day. You could even make that two hours if you wanted to. A weekly planning meeting for an hour and a daily huddle for 10 minutes. Come up with your version of this. It doesn't have to be exactly this. If you think this is too much, do a monthly planning meeting for an hour. Do a weekly planning meeting. Don't do a daily huddle. So edit this and kind of make it your own. Um, there's a document right here which can help with the meeting rhythm, you might say. So, and I know we're over time here, so for those of you who can hang on, it's probably just gonna be another three or four minutes. Um, this is a form where you can track your strategic goals. So in 2019, this should say 20, so just to edit this, all you have to do is click on it, and then you can edit any of this. So annually, this is what we wanna do. Do this, increase sales, better customer service, 70% conversion rate. What are your goals for the year? It could be five or to seven things. If you have 20 things, it's probably too much. Think about what's achievable that year. Then think each quarter, what do you want to work on? So Q1, we want to work on getting our conversion rate to 70%. What action do we need to take in order to achieve that? Work on the sales process. So think about all these annual priorities and break them up into quarters then these become your quarterly goals. Then in your monthly planning meetings or your monthly meetings, talk about your action towards this overall quarterly goal. So you see how it breaks down. Um, so you, you, could, you can do this again if you're an individual. You can have your, your goals for the year that you want to increase productivity of yourself. You want to um, work on XYZ process to get this result. Um, if you're a manager of a department, you can clearly see how this can help you. A manager looks at, creates results for themselves, and then looks at what they can implement within their department in order for their employees to achieve or get those results. So if you want to increase the conversion rate of the sales department, you need to I, create a sales process, create better advertising processes that create more qualified leads create better follow-up processes, and train your salespeople on those processes. So break this down by result for the year, quarterly result, monthly result. Then I just wanna throw one more thing at you. There's another process that's in the library, this one, it's called Key Performance Indicators. This is something that if you're the owner of the company, or even if you're a manager within a department, that you can use with your employees. So the key performance indicators are the quantification of the uh, work that's happening. So if I have, um, let's go to this one as an example. If I have a result inside of the human resource department or the office department that, or the, or set by managers, that we want to increase employee morale, we want to decrease employee turnover, we want to increase employee training, um, or in customer service, we want to increase defects, we want to decrease customer complaints, we want to increase employee customer satisfaction. These are indicators that you identify. So here's one called employee morale, employee turnover, employee training. 
So in your strategic plan, if, you, if you've said, I want better employee morale, which increases productivity and decreases people leaving and makes for a better culture and everyone's more happy and productive, that's your goal. Think about the indicators, employee morale, employee turnover, employee training, whatever they are, and then build them into a form like this one. So this is the custom form tool. And all this is is I hit paragraph and put in employee morale. I did multiple choice and put in good, fair, poor, and then another paragraph for comments. So I use this to create this custom form. So what I do is, is give this to my manager in that department and say, I want you to fill this out every year, I mean every month. If this is sales, you can do the same thing. If it's um, operations, you could do the same thing. So these are just more forms or ideas on how to quantify. And then just to leave you with this idea, over here on the dashboard, a manager can go and do all this in the control panel. So once you've built it over here, downloaded it from the library, edited it, made it your own, a manager can do it here. So the manager goes to their control panel, and if I've been tasked with um, measuring the, the key performance indication, indicators for my department, I click on key performance indicators, I go to this custom form, I call this um, Q1 2020. I go down and put employee morale. I put, this is all an explanation. These fields are all live now. So I put in what is employee morale? How do I know it? It's good. And then I put in comments. This could be the why. Then I go down to employee turnover. I say, this is what it is. So I'm typing in the text on that. I say, this quarter, it's, it's this and why. So I can fill out this form right here in Touchstone, and then when I save it, it date and time stamps it, saves a copy of it to Touchstone. At that point, I can print it, which creates a PDF that I could email to anyone, or I could tell my manager, hey, it's done, I did the indicators, or they just go and look because they know they assigned them to me. They can run a report here and see my key indicators that I've completed. So. I'm going to leave with this. There's a fair amount of questions that people have, and, and I'm going to email you directly about those or have someone to get back to you because we are a few minutes over right now. Um, so you think about strategic planning. Think about doing this process, downloading it from the library, spending a few hours just doing your, your vision for 2020, your goals for 2020. Keep them simple and short. Think about how often you're going to meet about those and discuss the progress. And then think about how to track the progress through indicator, key indicators or um, the forms that are inside of strategic planning. Thanks for coming, everybody. Tomorrow, tomorrow, next week, we're going to talk about organization strategy. This goes along with strategic planning, by the way. So if you're working on your strategic plan from this week to next week, if you feel like doing that, this organization chart, what I'm going to talk about next week, um, is related to that because this is a picture of your future, your future business, where you're going. Um, and the strategic plan and the org chart work really well together if, um, if they're built as a plan for the future. Thanks for coming, everybody. I'll talk to you next week.